Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, October 17th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. A beautiful shot of Comet Lemon over Mount Princeton near Salida last night. We've got a geomagnetic storm fizzle and episode 35 at Kilauea heating up. Buckle up, buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. More October snow blankets Utah resorts as ski season fast approaches. Alta, Snowbird, and others are breaking out the rulers after another round of powder arrived yesterday. Here we can see around nine inches at Alta. And this snowstorm ensures the wettest October since 1874 down on the valley floor in Utah. On th Thursday morning, Park City woke up to White Peaks and wet streets. It's not just another October dusting either. According to Utah Avalon Avalanche Center, forecaster Nikki Chat Champion, this month has already become the wettest October on record since 1874, with over two weeks still remaining before the month wraps up. That is mind-blowing. A wet October for Utah indeed. And when we take a look at the snow basins, we see 300% uh, or more. All these blue areas are above 150%. We do have some basins that are lacking, but the season is just getting kicked off. And there's big weather down at the Big Island in Hawaii. Heavy rain, isolated thunderstorms possible, flash flooding, road closures, and more in Honolulu. A storm center just northwest of Kauai, along with low-level convergent cloud bands riding in on it. Well, the storm system will move over Kauai through the morning hours, producing periods of heavy rainfall that may lead to minor flooding in some areas. So heads up there. A quick look at Tornado HQ in the U.S. Not a lot going on. We see this front developing here from Wisconsin through Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, into Texas, and that will be moving east and will become the talk of the town in the days to come. No severe weather warnings or watches, as the full forecast is now tracking a storm system across the eastern U.S. A storm system will continue to produce widespread showers and thunderstorms as it progresses eastward across the central U.S. into the northeast through the weekend. There are risks of severe thunderstorms and excessive rainfall on Saturday from the Ozarks to the mid-Mississippi River Valley with potential for damaging winds, large hail, tornadoes, and flash flooding. This baby is going to explode just like the snow in the Pacific Northwest, showing areas with 13 or 14 feet of snow by the end of October. That's insane and record-breaking. And here we can see the U.S., looking like a great start to the ski season in the West. As we walk through the MLS plus frozen precipitation models, you can see that storm threat, that line in the central U.S. is going to explode here Saturday night into Sunday. Whew, look at that. That's Sunday into Monday. And then by Tuesday, it's going to be wreaking havoc in the Northeast. And another one right behind it, later in the models, right here, another nor'easter developing for the end of October. And that could be bringing heavy snows to eastern Canada. Take a look at total accumulated precipitation for any flooding risks in the near future. Not much going on anywhere but the Pacific Northwest. Take a look at those numbers. Holy macaroni. Snow, water equivalent, 12 to 16 inches. Yeah, that's 10 to 12 feet of snow, folks. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore says it doesn't snow anymore. Seismic update! The most recent rumbler just kicked off in Hailuan City in Taiwan, 5.0, at a depth of 40 kilometers. Probably not a big rumbler there. 5.1 in Akutan in Alaska. Low-level activity worldwide. An Iranian volcano appears to have woken up. 700,000 years after its last eruption. Well, I actually looked into the data, and it may have erupted recently. We're talking about Taftan volcano near the border of Pakistan and Iran. It's showing signs of unrest in recent years. In fact, there's been 
gas pressure below the volcano's surface building, as well as uplift. Taftan Volcano Summit has risen 3.5 inches over 10 months between July 2023 and May of 2024. And Taftan is listed at the Smithsonian Institution as an extinct volcano, but it does show two uncertain eruptions, one in 1902 and one in 1993. As the uplift continues there at Tafton, it's anyone's guess what will happen. It is a stratocone volcano, could erupt at VEI 3 to 5, and we'll see what develops. As the 35th lava fountaining episode is developing at Volcani, Vol <laughs> Hawaii Volcano National Park, precursory lava activity continued at both the north and south events for the last 24 hours as we live streamed it. We're going to be live streaming the actual fountaining event because it will be happening anytime soon. Yeah, it's imminent. The estimated window for the start of episode 35 is now open as of the last 24 hours. And precursory lava continued at both north and south vents. High lava fountains could occur within the caldera at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park at any moment. So go check out our live streams on Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Rumble in just a few minutes. Worldwide Volcano News. Well, we've got Kilauea when we're waiting for the fountains. Ibu to 6,000 feet today. Raventador to 15,000 feet. Fuego, ongoing volcanic ash. Semadu, an eruption was reported. Ibu, an eruption also reported there. Semaru to 14,000 feet, Liwatobi to 18,000 feet, feet, continuous volcanic ash likely at Fuego, and Liwatobi Laki Laki in Flores, Indonesia, yet another massive eruption with lava flows happening today. Hey, hey, this is after the 45,000 foot blast two days ago. Ho, ho. Dukono to 6,000 feet, and wrapping up the list is Ibu with a 6,000 foot puff as we await Kilauea's fountaining. Space weather for October 18th. A massive coronal hole stream will couple with Earth in a few days. Flaring continues at low and flare levels. The geomagnetic storm was a complete fizzle. Shizzle, my dizzle. There I said it. And I'm also shrinking myself down to size. How do you like them apples? You can see the arrival of those said potential CME. It didn't really do anything, didn't budge plasma speed. And so, yeah, no light show overnight. But we do still have two green comets shining bright. Um, and how to spot them? Well, that's a good question. To see the pair go outside just after sunset and look to the northern sky for Comet Lemon, just down and left of the Big Dipper, close to the horizon. Comet Swan will also be near the horizon, but to the southwest. And take a good pair of binoculars and be patient. Here was the shot last night over Salida. Lars Labor Photography. This is Mount Princeton, Salida in the valley. And that is Comet Lemon. Absolutely spectacular sight there. As we get more data on a sunward jet from 3i Atlas imaged by the two meter twin telescope. This is, well, it's pointing a jet towards the sun. And here are the papers, Hubble Space Telescope Observations of Interstellar Interloper 3 I Atlas and the Physics of Cometary Antitails. Now, the problem with these papers is they're using the standard model of cosmology and they don't make any sense. What makes more sense is that this comet is electric and what we're witnessing are electrical discharges as it moves through, through an electrical environment in space. That's as simple as I can put it. Coral skeletons left by a medieval tsunami whisper a warning for the Caribbean region. Yeah, we've been screaming at the top of our lungs of all the types of catastrophes that happen on Earth, and tsunami is one of them. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when all the people on the Caribbean islands will die in an instant when a 200-foot wall of water washes across them. Yeah, there's no escape. Hopefully, some of them will get to large ships and will ride out the storm. But sometime between 1381 and 1391, 
An earthquake exceeding magnitude 8.0 rocked northeastern Caribbean and sent a tsunami barreling towards the island of Anaganda. Flooding scattered debris across the island, depositing giant coral boulders hundreds of meters inland. The corals died, but their skeletons remain. More than six centuries later, scientists are learning that the skeletons hold clues about tsunami history, and computer models show the flooding like result, likely resulted from a tsunami generated during a large earthquake in the nearby Puerto Rico Trench. All the links will be below, including the article, which didn't load. Dating a medieval tsunami with uranium series techniques on a Caribbean corals. If you're looking to get the best high-speed internet on Earth, it's Starlink. And it's now free. Yeah, we've just updated our affiliate site. $59 a month for the first year, and the Starlink kit is free in selected areas. This is the cheapest it's ever been offered. It used to cost over 500 bucks for the kit, 120 a month, and now it's down to $59 a month for the first year. The best high-speed internet on earth, and a free Starlink kit in select areas. So you've got nothing to lose. Check out if you qualify for a free Starlink at just $59 a month for the fastest internet on earth. Go get it. Support the channel. Support your preparedness. Because if the grid goes down and you've got a backup generator, you still got Starlink. Let that sink in. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 100,000 by the end of the year and we need your help to grow. Share this video and be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mary.